All right, we're going to do the HALS project from Zach's Programming with Visual Basic 2019. And the first thing we need to do is create a Windows Form application. All right, we got that done. And now, Let's see, uh, save this thing, change the form files name to mainform.vb. So my solution explorer, I rename this to mainform.vb and this form itself, we're gonna call frm main. And like usual, let's set maximize box to false. Let's set start position to center screen. Um, and we've been changing the font. We'll continue with that. All right. Save this. Oh, and let make sure we go to my project, double click on that and set your startup form to FRM main. So now hit F5 and your form should start in the middle of the screen. It's always good to check these Basic things, great. And we will be giving this thing a different name in a moment. Oh, Hell's Department Store is what we want to call this. So I'm going to look at the properties of the form and we'll call it Hale's Department Store. Okay. The interface shown is 457. So we have this group box with four uh, radio buttons for size. Um, the checkbox, whether you pick up in store or not. And there's some access keys on this. We have two labels, one for the cost and then one for the output here and then two buttons. So let's start with the group and then we'll add our um, matcher sizes here, twin, full, queen, king. So if you have common controls open, you'll notice that group is not in here, right? We have our radio buttons, we don't have a group. So I'm gonna just, I'm just going to do all Windows forms. Just show me everything. And here's my group box. And we're going to call this GRP size. And this has size. Right? So this is the size of our mattress. Now I'm going to go back to just some radio buttons here. And this is going to be RDO twin. The label for this is Ambersand TWIN. And let me, I'm going to move this to the other screen. So I'll be working on two screens here. You'll just only be seeing Visual Studio. Um, full queen and king. So I'm going to take this, copy, paste. That'll be full. That'll be queen. That'll be king. So let's do this work. All right, that's in place. And then I need a checkbox. And let's line this up somewhere here. CHK pick up. So whether you're gonna pick this up in the store, I don't like that it's lining up in the top there. I'd like it to be lined up here, but whatever, that's okay. And then we need a a label and this is going to say cost and then I have another label which is going to be the output and so since this is going to be the output I'm going to change the back color here to this info and I'm going to set the border style to fix single and then also set auto size to false because this is going to be our output. So then we can say, all right, I want to make it look like that size. So we'll get back to that. Might move that around a little bit, but there's our label. Oh, and this is not called label two. This is going to be uh, LBL cost. 
let's call this LDL cost output, all right? Not to be confused with this, that I would call LDL cost. All right, so there's our cost output. And then we have two buttons. This is going to be BTN display cost. And the text on this is display cost. And another one, which the text on this is going to be EXIT. And exit. All right, and let's take these set boobs. So we can get this right. I'll get these over here. Just want to get the height of these created or set properly. And do I want them? I'm going to make them the same width. Okay. So there's display cost. There's exit. Let's make these actually the same width as that. All right, and I just want to move this down just a little. I just use the arrows there to move it down a little. And I could take my entire form, hang on, my form's locked. Okay. And make it look like that. Um, I think that looks pretty good for the output. Let's just take this and get rid of the text in here. So let's hit F5, see what it looks like. Make sure I can only choose one radio button because they're in the same group there. So that looks good. Um, checkbox is working and this is a label. So I can't click in here and change anything. I have my two buttons. All right. And since I have my two buttons, let's go back to the form and we're going to change the accept button to BTN display cost and the cancel button to BTN exit. And let's code the exit button. All right, reviewing the uh, assignment again. The interface contains a checkbox, a group box, four radio buttons, two labels, two buttons. Be sure to set the tab order. Oops, make sure the tab order is right. So we're gonna start off within the group box and notice that within the group, I'm setting like a sub tab order. All right, so there, our tab index makes sense now or tab order. So in this case, I actually, normally I go left to right, like you would re be reading a book, but within the group, we're going straight down. So this form is a, laid out a little bit differently. So we wanna make sure the tab index makes sense here. Prices of the comforter, uh, as well as the shipping fee are listed in this other figure. Okay, which is further down the page here. The shipping fee is only when the user does not use the store pickup, display cost to determine the comforter price and whether it be charged a shipping fee. All right, so we could, you know, I'm, I guess we should use some consts here because the cost of these mattresses isn't going to be changing in our code. So I'm going to say const twin price equals $39.99. Um, twin price, sorry, as double. And then const dbl um, full price as double is $49.99. Cons queen, sorry, DPL, queen price as double is also $49.99. Okay. And cons DPL, king price as double is $69.99. And const um, DPL shipping fee as double is equal to five, five dollars. So I didn't really put any pseudo coding here, but set the constants for the prices. Okay, and then we need to um, create a variable to hold the cost. And then I need to determine which, I was gonna say size, was chosen. Did the user, uh, I'll, I'll say, should we charge shipping? And then output the cost. So, create a variable to hold the cost. Dim DDL cost as double is zero. 
determine which size was show, chosen. So here I'm going to say um, if RDO twin dot check, then DBL cost is equal to DBL twin price. And then else if RDO full dot checked, then DBL cost is equal to DBL full price. All right, I'm gonna do that um, two more times. So when we're saying if RDO twin dot checked, what we're actually saying is if RDO twin dot checked is equal to true, okay? Um, but RDO twin dot checked is itself either true or false. So we actually don't need this equal to true, right? If RDO twin dot checked is true, then this whole thing is true. And if this is false, then this whole thing is false. But similarly, if RDO twin dot checked is true, then this is going to evaluate to be true. And we can just use that price, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the only thing I would maybe do is add an else and then right here, like notify the user, they must select a size, all right? And I'll do that at the end because that's not really in this assignment, but I like to show you extra things. Okay, should we charge shipping? So I'm gonna say, if chk pickup dot checked, I'm going to say if not chk pickup dot checked. So if they did not check that they're going to pick it up, then our cost, we're going to add to that cost the shipping fee. And then um, show the cost on the output. So that's lbl cost output dot text is equal to dbl cost dot to string and we want to show this as currency so i'm going to test this real quick so i want a twin size that you pick up in the store 39.99 i want a queen size you pick up in the store what if i want to ship to me okay so that looks pretty good king size and and again i can tab through here let's see where's my I can tap through so I can use the arrows and go to back to twin. And then I want to pick up and store the space bar. We'll check that. Um, and then I can hit enter because the access or the accept key has been set to this button. So that worked. I'll X to exit. Let's review the assignment again. The shipping fees only when the customer is not taking advantage of that. The display cost should uh, be determined by the, oh, th these are comforters, not mattresses. Comforters price and whether to charge a shipping fee. The button should display the cost of the comforter, which might include shipping fee with a dollar sign in two decimal places. So we did that by saying, display this as currency. Be sure to code the checked change procedures for the radio buttons and checkbox. So they don't say what to do with that, but here's what I would do. Like every time you change one of these things, so I'm gonna choose um, the twin radio button. I'm gonna go to events, check changed. What we wanna do is we wanna basically display the cost, just like if you were to click this button, okay? And can I multi-select these? I can, all three of these. And then also the checkbox here, check changed, display cost. So these one, two, three, four, five, these four radio buttons in the checkbox, all now, whenever those are changed, see they're all up here, whenever those are changed, it's going to run the BTN display cost underscore click sub procedure. Remember, this is called, this could be called whatever I want. So I can call this sub procedure um, calc comforter cost. That's what it is, it's comforter. All right. And when I look at this again, that change is going to run calc comforter cost. Okay. Whatever this sub procedure is called. So let's run this again. So it starts off by saying, Forty-four ninety-nine. Why did it do that? Oh, because I, I did not. I was not picking up in store, so it was the cost of a twin plus five. Once you say pick up in store, it goes down. Once you say I want a queen, the price changes. Okay, the price is changing every time we do something. The price changes. All right. So, pretty great. 
Um, I'm not sure if that's what they wanted. They might have wanted just to clear out this output, but that's the way I did it. I think it, it's nicer that way. Like there's no need to even ever hit this button, right? And that's even the better part of this, that I can take this display cost button. I'm just going to hide it because I don't want to get rid of it. Um, you don't have to do this, right? But I just want to show you that this entire application can run without the user having to hit a display cost button. All right, and it's just making it that more efficient for the user to use the application. Okay, um, be sure to code check change, save and test the cost for our queen that will be picked up should be forty nine ninety nine. Yep. Okay. So I think we are done here with Hale's department store. Okay, I almost forgot to show you this uh, bit about notify the user they must select the size. So if somehow the user doesn't select any size, um, we're gonna just tell the user that they screwed up. So we have this message box dot show is a, a built-in uh, vb.net function that will pop up a window and show the user a message. And message box dot show, can I get the help brought up here for this, please? Well, okay, it's gonna take a message and the box name. So the message I wanna show here is, um, say, please select a comforter size. And then the title for this box is going to be uh, input error. Okay, so if they happen to not choose a size, we're gonna show this input error. And then I want to just stop, right? I don't wanna show any of this stuff. Um, if anything, maybe I wanna take LBL cost output dot text and set it to nothing because they screwed that up somehow. And then I wanna leave this sub procedure. I don't wanna run any of the rest of this. So I'm going to exit sub, and that will lead that will leave this sub procedure that I'm in right now. Now, is it possible to? I don't think this is even possible to run this way. So what I have to do, what I'm going to do to show you how this would work, is I'm going to comment out this king section. So if they choose king, twin, full, and queen are not checked. So it would um, pop this up. All right, because otherwise there's really no way to run this, this else. But it's always good to um, handle all cases, even if the interface doesn't allow it. Because oftentimes, some one programmer will create the interface and someone else will create the code. So if you're the one creating the code, you can't rely on the person doing creating the interface to do their job correctly. So now if I choose king, it gives me an input error. Please choose a comforter size because, oh, and I can never... Oh, there we go. Queen, full, twin. Those all work. Check in this works. As soon as I go to king, please select a comforter size. Um, why it runs twice, I don't know, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So put that back in. Run it now, and they can choose all different sizes. There's no way to uncheck a radio button. Um, but again, Usually there's two different programmers working on applications at least, and you can't rely on the person on the front end building things correctly. So you as the programmer working on the back end need to handle all cases.